Welcome to the pre-match pint with London Pride. We're down here at the London Pride Brewery and Tap Room on Chiswick Lane. Bees fans, get yourself down here for a 10% discount. And joining me for a pint say ahead of the Burnley game is Reese Weston, Natalie Sawyer, and making his debut in the pre-match pint, reunited, aren't we? Back, yeah. Carly oh, Osborne. Thank you, thank you. We appreciate it. How are you, it. mate? I'm well, thank you. Very well. Yeah, the only man happier to have you here with us today is your social media manager. Yeah, probably. probably. <laughs> we get some more content going. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, look, guys, before we start, I just want to raise a little toast because it's a very special man's birthday today. It's uh, Christian Norgar's 28th birthday because it's recorded on Thursday. Cheers to Christian. Happy birthday. Mm. I feel like we should probably then talk about Christian Norgard. Um, I absolutely adore this man. Um, Carly, what impact has he had on, on the club since he's come in? I think he's had a massive one, just the way he carries himself. Obviously, how he is as a player, but for me, the way he carries himself on the pitch, off the pitch. Um, he's a leader. He's a leader by his performances for me. You get different leaders in the game. Um, you get leaders that, you know, rant and rave, but you get leaders that kind of carry themselves in the right way and, and show people where they need to go. And for me, that's what he's done. And um, he's been a fantastic addition. Was he someone that maybe we'd, we'd missed that player for a couple of years? Do you see what I mean? That, that kind of that defensive, the, the six they call it now, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I mean, absolutely. And, and, you know, Carly's just pointed out some of his, his qualities already. You know, he was a player already coming in with some experience, but you feel like he's really elevated himself season upon season with us. And, um, you know, you look at the stats in the Premier League this season, he's been so far up there with tackles and, and, and things like that. So, He's been so pivotal to our team and someone that, when you remember when he was injured and Jan Elk came in, who did a great job in, in replacing him. And then we had that discussion about when Norgard's fit, how does it work with them both in the team? Can you get both in the team? I think Norgard is, as you have absolutely just pointed out, he's just the uttermost professional player. Uh, that's how I feel when I look at him and how I see him on the pitch, how, how he carries himself around the ground and uh, around the team and everything. Um, he's been a wonderful addition, wonderful. Yeah. Last week I was really fortunate enough to sit down with him and I spoke about his whole football journey and I wasn't he surprised me with a lot of what he said. I kind of had maybe had in this this image that he'd have easy street a little bit in his football career. I obviously had a few knockbacks. Reese, uh, I shared it with you and, and you've seen it. It's, it's out uh, next Wednesday actually, so keep an eye out for it. It was interesting how he spoke in that, didn't he? And he, he spoke very honestly about how he had a few struggles as well in his career, didn't he? Yeah, you know, it's, I have to say she was brilliant interview I mean shameless plug but it was it was, it was it was shameless but it was fantastic and you know I think everything you guys have said is absolutely spot on in terms of him as a player but you know, listening to someone be so articulate in their second language it's it never ceases to amaze me how, how, how bright these guys are and Christian epitomizes that and I think you know seeing or hearing where he's where he's been leaving home at such a young age knockbacks struggles with with mental health to a degree um, look, he, 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 for me, it, it sums up what, what Brentford are all about. You know, he's very intelligent, you know, wears his heart on his sleeve. His performances show, show that. And again, like I say, watch, watch the interview because I think it's, it just shows a real in-depth you know, view into what he's about as a person. He's brilliant. Yeah, like you say, he, he, he kind of opened up about his, his struggles, a bit anxiety-wise when he went to Bromby and stuff like that. And it, I, was, I was so impressed with the way he spoke about it. And, testament to him I thought he was incredible like you say he's, he's what we're all about as a club another thing that we're all about is, is togetherness and be together in Carly uh, the women's team had a fantastic result on, on Sunday it was great to see uh, everyone getting behind the women's team wasn't it mate yeah it was it was fantastic uh, f uh, I think it was 1,010 uh, fans we had which is history making because biggest ever crowd that the ladies have played in front of um, so that was brilliant but the day in all just the support um, the way the players performed dealt with the pressure um, it was a fantastic day, really good day, and there was a real togetherness, like around the ground and stuff. It was, it was fantastic, yeah. And you can't really overemphasise how big that is, really, and, and hopefully there'll be a bit of a legacy from this, right? Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, you know, changing room after, and, and we're having a chat, and I'm asking how the how the girls felt about the day and stuff, and and honestly, they they felt amazing. They were so emotional. Um, in terms of being able to have that support and feel that support. Um, you know, they're signing autographs and things like that. So for them, it was like a really, really big deal. And we just want to keep building on that. You know, the more support we can, we can, um, we can gain and get will be fantastic. But I said to the ladies, listen, you have to make sure you go and put on performances. And they did. 7-2 wins, some fantastic goals, real quality, um, play some decent football. So, yeah, they were, um, I was proud of them, without a doubt. Amazing. And that was obviously 
Tops off a, a pretty special weekend uh, for Brentford. Um, that came after the, the win at Norwich. Natalie, as a fan, how, how nice was it to get back to winning ways? <laughs> it's a bit of a relief, isn't yeah. it? Um, yeah, it was amazing, brilliant. Um, you know, obviously outstanding to get a result like that against one of your relegation rivals. Um, and just just what the club needed. Although there was still, pl still plenty of games still to go, but it just felt as though, when are we going to get that win? And so to get one as we did, in the manner that we did as well, as in like, a big win um, I, I, yeah I mean I had a big smile on my face and um, yeah made me going to work the next day very happy I must say but going into work very happy I guess Reese it was the same going into to work in the office but on that what will it have done for the change room because actually again I'm so lucky that I get to be there day to day and the atmosphere was brilliant and it has been during this whole period and that's testament to Thomas and the staff that they, and also the players that the spirits have been really really high there's been a real tightness to that group every day when I've when I've walked in, um, but naturally, what does a win like that do to, to, a, to a squad, Reese? Well, I think it, it it validates all the work you put in, and I, you know, we said previously, you know, looking at it objectively, you know, 27 points now is we're in good shape in that regard. If you're walking into this now knowing that you know Brentford are 27 points, you wouldn't think there's a problem. And I think the fact that we had some, some poor results going into the, the Norwich game, it just, it just kind of validates everything that, that's, been, that's been put in on the training ground, the belief that's been instilled in the squad. And it's palpable, isn't it? You know, we're, we've been desperate for, for a win. Um, there's, no, there's no question the commitment of the team. You know, they've, they've, they've been giving absolutely everything. But to get that reward in the manner they did, um, you just hope now that if, there were, if confidence was waning ever so slightly, this will be the boost they need. Um, obviously, you know, going going into the, the weekend, it's, it's a hugely important match. But I, I think you know, just give every, everybody a lift. Everyone around the club a lift, not just at, at Jersey Road, but in the office and for the fans and everyone associated to the club. It just gives you a little bit more of a, a lift and, a, and a, a spring in your step going into work. And it's, it was great, a great performance as well. And look, it's unusual that the first person we're going to speak about here isn't someone that scored a hat trick, but it. It seems remiss of me not to speak about one man in particular, Carly, Christian Eriksen. I mean, for, for when he came on the other day at Newcastle, I was like, oh, hey, this, is, this is special. And then it just seems Saturday was just on another level, wasn't it? Yeah, he, he was. I mean, I was, I was at the Newcastle game when he, when he came on and stuff, and it was, um, it was unbelievable to see him back on the pitch. For him, I can only imagine how amazing that would have felt. But then, yeah, when he played against Norwich and he started, you could just see the quality. I'm still trying to get my head around having Christian Eriksen in a Brentford shirt, to be honest. I know it sounds bad, but I am. But it just goes to show how far the club have come for one. Yeah. Um, the relationships and stuff that people have at the club to, to bring a player like Christian in. Um, and you could see the, the, the quality, the, the way he read the game, the passing, his, his movement, his understanding. Um, listen, he made me want to get the boots back out and start learning again <laughs> because he was just different gear. It was real quality. It's like you were saying there, Cardi, and you were like, oh, I can't believe he's playing in the Brentford shirt, but it, that's not small time or anything. Like, this is, we, we discussed this in the office actually before we came. He could play Barcelona Real Madrid. Do, do you see what I mean? He, he is world class. And I think Jamie Carragher said he could be the difference in these sides around us. He literally could. Um, have we got this? Can we underestimate how special a footballer we've got in a Brentford shirt at the moment, Natalie? Oh, well, like Carly said, he can't believe it. I can't believe it. I don't think anyone can still believe it. And when it was being mooted, and you're thinking, really, Christian Eriksen is going to play for Brentford? And then it happens. You're still, like, pinching yourself. And even seeing him now playing in the shirt, obviously he is world class. And I know we all know what happened to him. It's all about, could he return? Wow, he has returned. And he's returned, hopefully, to that level that he was once at. Because, I mean, so far, it's so far so good for Brentford. He's been brilliant. And we talked about what he will bring to that team and how it will change the dynamic of our forward play because Ivan might not have to drop as deep. And, and that's, I'm sure, been a, sometimes a little bit of a frustration for someone like Ivan Tony. He wants to be in the box. He wants to be scoring goals. So to have a creator like you have in Christian Eriksen, oh, I mean, it's, it's still dreamland. It really is. We saw that, didn't we? Left foot, right foot. And also, I think one thing that is easy when you speak about a player like him is about how what he does on the ball, but Reese he covers every every inch of grass, doesn't he? As well, it's intuitive, isn't it? It's he, yeah, I, I completely agree with everything you said. And to see someone like him just you know, slotting back into where he was previously, it's, it's incredible. And yeah, he reads the game so well, positionally, anticipates 
there are very few players in world football that, that, that have an understanding of what's coming next before it happens. Yeah. And he's, he's definitely got that ability. And, you know, it just takes up incredibly intelligent positions on the pitch, sees passes, you know, sees passes that you'd have to watch three replays to see. You know, do you know I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous, the vision he's got. And, you know, you, you'll see, you'll, you will see, the more he plays, the, the levels of the team will, will improve as well. The runs will improve. People, you know, sometimes as, 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 as forward players, you'll make runs and you kind of hope you might get found. Now there's a real, real expectation that you will. Well, and again, in terms of confidence that he'll bring to the team, it's, yeah, you, you saw that on, on that Saturday. That diag from Bomo in the first half. It's just, it's just, <laughs> a, a, no, a no eyes pass from 40 yards. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I, I'm, again, we talked about medial ligaments in <laughs> off air. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? To try and reverse a pass that, yeah. that accurately, you know, it's, he, he's, he's a, an, an unbelievably special player and it's a privilege to watch him play here. Well, he was heavily involved in the first, obviously, it was his corner that Christopher flicks on and then Ivan at the back post. Um, I mean, it's mad that we haven't spoke about Ivan Tony immediately. Carl, do you remember a show that we used to do the warm up? We used to speak about yeah, him. I remember that show, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, we remember used to speak one. about Ivan pretty much every week and we ran out of things to say. That's why the show got cut. <laughs> um, Thomas said the best penalty taker in the world. Um, there's more to him, though, than, than just that, isn't there, Natalie? Oh, gosh, absolutely. I mean, is he the best penalty taker in the world? On form, you'd probably say yes, absolutely. Yeah. I still can't watch him take a penalty because it frightens me <laughs> how he does it. But he has so much confidence in himself, which obviously is half of what's, what's down to take a penalty, I'm sure. Um, of course, there's so much more to him than just the penalties. I mean, he is one of those players that works tirelessly hard. It's always that cliche of defending from the front. He is one of the first when there's a set piece in our box to try and clear a ball. There is so much more to his game. And I love the fact also he is, he's another leader, I think, on the pitch. And, you know, th that relationship he has with Brian and Burma, I think, is so special. How he really wants, the, you can see he wants the best for Brian and Burma. And I think that, again, when you're in a, a team that's competitive within it, to have that, I think, is a really special, really yeah. special trait. And we saw again the classic, uh, I don't know how common knowledge this is, but he was getting a bit of stick in the warm-up and then obviously his celebration, he's gone to find the person that was giving a bit of stick. Carly, is that the worst thing you can do to Ivan Tony? Because yeah. players seem to have learnt it now, yeah. managers have learnt it. Obviously, we saw Stoke last year, they tried to wind him up and he went and had the last laugh. Players, and you can't do anything if the fans are doing it, surely. That's the worst thing you can do, right? It seems like it, it seems to be the worst thing you can do. It just fires him up to a different level, puts him in a, in a zone. Maybe it's something that we've got to do as fans ourselves <laughs> yeah. before the game to get, him, to get him going. But he just, yeah, he seems to go into like a different level and he, he needs to prove a point and, and most of the time he does. Yeah. Look, after the game, Pontus said, that means nothing, though, no, if we don't do it on, on Saturday. You made a comment. What was your comment? Classic captain speak, yeah? Yeah, it's so down, down, it, down play. Yeah, reality check. Of course, don't get carried away. But you know, we've we, we've got to, we've got to enjoy it. You know, as as a, as a club, we've got to enjoy the the high points. And um, no, he's right to a degree. You know, Saturday's massive. Let's not, let's not get away from the fact that you know, home going against Burnley is, is a big big game. But like I say, if 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 we apply ourselves like we did against Norwich, you know, we'll, we'll be very very difficult to beat. You know, Burnley have had a little spike. You know, they've they've done reasonably well of late. You touched on. You know Chelsea and, and how unlucky they were not to be ahead at the break against Chelsea. They end up getting beaten heavily. You know every every club in the Premier League is, is capable of having a spell in games, but these these are the ones now, aren't they? You know this is a business end of the season, as you said, 10, 10 games to go. You know Burnley at home, it's a real opportunity to lay down another marker, um, and I'm, I'm confident we can. Again, you know we, we've shown against Norwich that when 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 backs against the walls, we've come out and we've put in a really decent performance. So. Yeah, and Pontus is going to say the right things, of course. You have to. You've got, you've got to keep everyone level-headed. But we, as fans, as employees, we can revel in it. Let's, let's, yeah. let's get into Saturday and let's smash Burnley. We saw... <laughs> yeah, I'm ready, I'm off. Um, we, we saw that 4-3-3. And do you think, Natalie, the sensible thing is, I'm sure it, it's not, they're not going to listen to me, but play with that system again against well, Burnley. I've because... heard Thomas watches, <laughs> so you never know. Because um, I think, for me, a, a big thing as well was Sergi against Norwich and I think he really flourished in that attacking role again coming in off the left is that something that I think looking at this Burnley game to, that, that front three now is, is a different animal it, it's, it's exciting it's going to put teams on the back foot right yeah oh, absolutely I think Sergi spoke about being a part of that attacking forward play of Brentford because look, he was asked to do a job and his job has never really been to, to be defensive that's never really what he's done when he's been with us anyway and it must be hard to be asked to do something that isn't necessarily in your first mindset when you've always been an attacking sort of player and then you're expected to get back and defend and do bits like that as well. So for me, I think definitely Sergi Canos should be playing that forward role 
Um, I think he enjoys it. He has a smile on his face when he's doing it as well because he knows that he's having a, a, f a form of dictation on the game as well. And, and you know, when you see Sergi smiling and enjoying himself, you know that things are going well, I think. So, um, and he was buzzing, I think, to be playing in that forward uh, front three, like you say. And I think I'd expect to see that again again. He lifts Burnley. everyone, doesn't he, as well? He does. Like, he he gets yeah, everyone going. Exactly. And I think, look, people say a lot of stuff about Burnley and actually... I love him. I think you need teams like Burnley. Football would be rubbish if you didn't have teams like Burnley. And they, Sean Dyche always gets them out of trouble. And look, people will say they're ugly and they're this and that. I think don't matter. Everyone's got different styles. Kylie, how do you play against a team with a six foot six centre centre forward? If you're a centre half and you've got a Mark V course at the weekend. Is it cut off at source or, or what are you thinking as in your individual battle there? You've got, you've got to try and cut it off at source if you can it's to save yourself a problem. It's easy to cut it off at source so I can do less work. But if not, it's just about making sure people are covering, trusting yourself with your starting position, obviously being strong enough to go and try and win a header. If you can't win it, just let them have it, keep the ball in front of you. Um, but listen, Thomas is going to know a lot more than me, so I'm sure he'll have them set up exactly how he needs to. Um, but Burnley are, they're, they're a horrible team to play against. They, I think they enjoy being horrible, um, but we've got to match them on that side and then bring our quality in and, and show the difference in that area as well. Bang on, bang on. It's actually time for today. I'm really sorry. What? Jamie's telling me it's time. What? To blame Jamie. When, when do you I'm ever really let sorry. Jamie run be here, Jamie. Jamie's telling me it's time in the background, so we've got to call it time. Um, but make sure you guys in the comments below are telling us how can you run out of superlatives for Christian Eriksen's uh, performance of the week? Tell us what you thought of it. Talk to you about Ivan Tony. Is he the best penalty taker in the world right now? Um, before we go, though, you said it's a huge game on Saturday. Look, I've come to terms with the fact that 34, I'm probably not going to score a goal and win us a football match, right? Um, I think a few of us here maybe probably aren't going to get that opportunity again. But come Saturday, I can do something, can't I? I can make sure I'm loud, that I'm proud. When Pontus is screaming, I'm screaming, that I'm chanting every song from the first minute. Because that is a way that I can affect the game. And I want to be able to come out of that game on Saturday knowing I've done my little bit. So we've got to get behind the team on Saturday, haven't we? It's a huge game. Come on, you bees. You reds. You reds. You reds. <laughs> <laughs>